Hey there, everybody. <laughs> We're very last minute right now. I don't know if you guys could see like on the sides of the screen there, you could see like movement. It was really, really strange. For some reason, the, 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 um, the countdown wasn't taking up the whole screen. We saw that happen once before and I was cracking up. Um, and I was thinking of you, Liz, if you're on, uh, because my husband was standing like right there where you could see that little bit of, of the, the, the green screen or the background actually here in, in, um, in the, the studio. And he was standing in there and I'm like, I wonder if Liz is watching because you could see him. You could just make him out there. It was kind of cool. So anyway, we've got to figure out why it's doing that. We have no idea. So hey, 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 hi, live from Bloomfield. Here we are. <laughs> Oh my goodness, let's see who's here today. I've got, I'm seeing some new names here. We've got Carol Lynn. Hi, Carol Lynn. And um, who's here? I'm looking on YouTube. Marilyn and Shelly and Lisa. Um, crafting a Planned Life. Uh, Beverly Gleason, Nancy. Wow, goodness gracious, so good to see everybody. I'm gonna check over here on Facebook and give a shout out. We've got Charmin. Hi, Charmin, good to see you. And uh, who else is here? Um, Mary Ann and um, Eileen, Cindy Patty, hey there girl, uh, Bianca, hi, Susan, Kathy Marvel, looks like my husband gave everybody a little welcome too, and Allie, oh my goodness, so good to see you guys. Um, we had an absolutely beautiful sunny day here in Michigan and I didn't get to see any of it because we've been here in the studio. <laughs> But as you can see behind us, it's a gorgeous day. Today we're working with um, our Cherry Blossom stamp set. And um, one of my favorite things, I haven't actually gone to Washington, D.C. during, you know, when their, their whole, you know, Cherry Blossom blowout thing, <laughs> whatever it's called. I'm sure they have a name for it. Um, but I think it is absolutely gorgeous in the photos that I've seen. And I do love Washington, D.C. If you haven't been there, it's absolutely really, really cool. It's really beautiful and amazing. And anyway, uh, so here we have the, um, the cherry blossoms behind us or behind me. There we go. And the beautiful, beautiful water. And of course, the, uh, the Washington Monument. I hope I have that right. <laughs> Isn't that terrible? <laughs> How does it go? You know you're American when you don't know your monuments and your... Because <laughs> if you weren't from here, you would have had to memorize them. <laughs> Whatever, I don't know. Okay, so um, today I have a little announcement because I've been talking about this watercolor class that I want to put together. And I got to play some more... What? Oh, my husband's telling me not to use my hands. <laughs> He's just like going, <laughs> and I'm supposed to know what it means. I don't know. We need to get our signals. You know, how does that go when you have like the, you know, face things and all that? I don't know. We got to get that straight. We don't have them. So anyway, my watercolor class, I finally have a date if you want to put this down. It's going to be two weeks from Saturday. I think I originally said that I wanted to do it on a Saturday. Um, and it's going to be, I think that's June 6th. We're going to shoot for, shoot for, it's actually going to be scheduled for 4 p.m. Because that way I figure that we can hit, you know, the East Coast, the, um, the West Coast, and then over in Europe. Um, so if anybody wanted to join from anywhere around, I'm hope, hoping I'll have a couple of people. But it is going to be about two hours long, I'm planning on. And I think I'm actually going to use the Cherry Blossom set that we're going to be using tonight. And, and I think I decided, too, that I'm going to do two different watercolor classes. And these are going to be classes. I'm going to be talking to you about, about the watercolors, about my technique. I'm not an expert. I just do what I do. Um, but I'm going to actually be painting that, you know, and, and taking questions and kind of guiding you through how I do it, at least. Um, so we'll start with that and then I'll plan another day and we'll do uh, possibly a, one of the Holly polka doodles images because there's a lot going on with those. We have skin tones and hair and clothing and some scenery. So that is my plan. Um, but anyway, so for today, and I, and I will have that information on the video as well too, so you can get that. But um, for today, let's see, this is what we're going to work with today. This is the Cherry Blossom set, and um, let's see. This is actually quite a large set. It's a six by eight stamp set. It is a photopolymer stamp set made right here in the United States. Uh, it has, you know, a beautiful 
arrangement or array of cherry blossoms in different pieces that you can so you can customize your floral arrangement really really cool sentiments in here along with the really really large um, hugs uh, sentiment that's in there as well and then we also have coordinating dies so i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to switch my camera over so that i can show you these in greater detail okay i think i hit the wrong button there anyway here we are let me get rid of this one here too okay so this is the set and you can see how large it is. You can see just according to my, you know, size it with my hand here. And you can see this one is beautifully loved. These are the two stamps that I worked with today. So this one has, let me see, I can't remember how many, 24 stamps in total. Um, on the back, we have a beautiful project. And um, so that gives you kind of a coloring guide there for some of the flowers. But I love these sets because we have, we have the large floral, um, floral piece here, this branch with all these beautiful blossoms on it. And then we have some smaller stamps in here as well, so you can customize and make your own arrangement, which I just love. And then we have hugs, and then all of these individual adorable um, um, sentiments. I absolutely love the font in this. It's a really simple, straightforward font. I miss your hugs. Sending you lots of hugs. Hope you feel better soon. So it's not all just about hugs. We've got all kinds of things for all different, um, just really different you know, types of reasons. I think you're special, dreaming of you, sending love and hugs, a lot, of, a lot of variety there that I think is just fantastic. So I guess the point is, is you can use it for a lot of different um, uh, occasions and really throughout the year. And then this is the die set. So we have a die in here to cut out every single one of those flowers. And then we have the image on the back as well. So I'm going to go ahead. Here's, I'm going to give you a quick little sneak peek. This is, this is what I did. This is what I started with. Um, and I'm going to walk you through this whole thing when we do the watercolor class. But today we're actually going to do a little bit of finishing on it just so I can give you kind of a little taste of what we're going to do in the class. And then we're going to finish the card. So to get started, I'm going to start with, I'm going to start by stamping the image. And let me grab my watercolor paper. Oh, Alan, will you do me a favor? Will you grab my markers over there? I forgot to grab those. Yes. yes. Okay. Let me start with this. I got it upside down. These are the markers that I'm going to be using in the class. These were, I've, I've been saying for a little while that I was getting new markers, and these are them. These are by a company called uh, Karin, Karin, something like that. Uh, Brush Marker Pro. This particular box is the 72 marker uh, pack. If you look in our store on the, um, oh, which tab is it? I think it's under... It's the left, I can't remember all the names of the tabs, but it's the one on the far right just before you get to inspiration. I can't look at my screen right now. And it's in the other tab. Um, and you will find these. We have the 72 pack. We have the 60 color pack as well as a 20, I think it's a 26 color pack. Um, and any of those is fine. The difference between the 60 color pack and the 72 is that in the 72, you get these beautiful neon colors. So you're gonna get 12 markers that have, have these absolute, I think it's 12 in total that are neon. Um, they're absolutely wonderful. Let me open this up so you can see what it looks like. I've got some pulled out because I used them. But um, anyway, so you don't have to use these markers in the class. You can, you can watercolor with whatever you want. If you have your favorites, go for it. Uh, but I am going to be talking about these, and I'm going to be using them because I absolutely love them. That's why I put them in the store. The paper that I'm going to be using, if you wanted to get the same paper, is um, this. Uh, it's a cold press. It's by Fabriano, which is one of my favorites. I stock a lot of Fabriano. This is a cold press. It is 100% cotton, extra white. I don't have this in the store. Um, but this is fantastic. If you get this, this is actually, this, this is a brick. And if you don't know what a brick is, it means that it's basically bound or glued on all of the sides. But you're going to have a little corner that is going to lift up. And you're actually going to, let me show you this. Let me get a tool. 
this is what I do. I don't know if this is the right way to do it. Oh, there was my head. Sorry about that. This is, I, I just grab a tool that has, this is like a little, I don't know, spatula, I guess. Um, if you go to the corner here like this, you can fit that underneath there. And if you slide that along, it's going to remove that particular piece of paper. And I would just slide this on all sides like this. Joanna is asking how much is the class. Well, that I got to tell you is the second most wonderful thing. It's, it's free. This is just going to be another live that I'm going to do. It's going to go um, on our YouTube channel, just like this is. It's going to go in our Facebook group, just like this is. And it's going to be Saturday, June 6th at 4 p.m. You're just going to join me. I'm going to have a reminder on our YouTube channel. Uh, so you can, you know, you can click on that so that you get an automatic reminder. But it's absolutely free. I'm just going to do this for you guys because I absolutely love you. So here we go. This is the paper. Cold press the difference between cold press and hot press is cold press is a little bit bumpy. That's one of the, that, that is in terms of texture, okay? Hot press is going to be really, really smooth. I'm sure there's other differences, but that to me, you know, in terms of touch and feel is a huge difference. Um, I do generally like to work when I'm stamping with a hot press because it's really smooth. But with these markers, I love this cold press because the markers are just so much more fluid on this paper um, and it's not incredible it's not really really bumpy so um, it, it just works beautifully so let's go ahead I have cut this to an A2 sized card so that means that it is four and a quarter by five and a half inches and I'm going to go ahead and stamp this on here let me grab my stamp And I want the large stamp here. Do we have any question? Any other questions, Alan? Yeah, I'm trying to. Okay. Cindy says, "I'm new to your papers. What size is your normal card using the six-inch papers?" Um, I typically, the most popular, I should say, to, uh, in crafting and card making today, is an A2, which is your four by uh, four and a quarter by five and a half, and I typically make that size card. Okay, so I'm going to line this up on the diagonal. Now, one of the things I thought about when I was making this is I, you know, I, I could stamp this in black and it would be just fine, but I chose to stamp it in iced tea. I like to do that a lot, uh, especially when I'm working with lines that I want to disappear and I mean, you could use different colors. You could use a lighter, kind of a light gray. You could use a light blue. Um, you you kind of want to pay attention to what colors you're going to be working with in your image because you want the lines to disappear just a little bit. And because this is an image out of nature and I knew I was going to be working with greens and browns and stuff, I didn't want the harsh black. So I chose to work with a brown and I wanted to use the hybrid ink because it's going to work beautifully with the watercolors. And I wanted it to kind of disappear. We also have... Um, the uh, coffee bean, which is a really dark brown, and I thought that that was going to be too dark. Uh, Joanna is saying, what does cold press mean? Uh, I don't know. All, I'm not, I can't be, get real technical with it because I don't know all of the details on that, to be perfectly honest with you. I know it has to do with the way that they make the paper, but the, the, the big difference that you're going to be able to touch and see is going to be, it's going to be that the cold press is going to be a little bit bumpy. I think it's usually, um, for me, in my experience, it'll, it'll actually hold a little bit more water as well as your coloring. But it's going to be a little bit bumpy. And um, instead of being really, really smooth, a hot press will be smoother. And it has to do with the way that they manufacture it. So I've gone ahead and inked this up. Now you will notice when you're stamping on a paper, like a cold press where it has, a, where it's a little bit bumpy, you're not going to get a really crisp image because, well, because it has like those little divots in it, right? So you're going to have to stamp it more than once. And you may still be left with some areas where the ink just doesn't make its way all the way down into the paper. She 
Okay. There we go. So now because I'm going to be painting this and I want the lines to disappear, I don't want to keep going with this. I've got some areas here where it's a little bit lighter, but I can still see the outline. I'm not going to worry so much about that because I want those lines to disappear. They're just going to kind of blend into the way that I color this or paint this anyway. So this is my stamped image. Now this is not going to be a big watercolor class here today. But I want to show you, I wanted to show you this image. I wanted to show you my technique when I stamp it. I wanted to talk to you about the tools that I'm using. There we go. And I wanted to give you an opportunity to, you know, if you needed any of any tools for the watercolor class, I wanted you to have enough time to be able to, you know, order something if you need it. If you, you know, wanted to use the papers that you already have, or if you wanted to get the Fabriana paper, then that is perfectly, you know, fine, whatever it is you want to do. So this is my image. Sharon is saying, does the water go through to the next sheet the down these blocks? Um, it, no, it doesn't because the paper is actually, can you hear this? This paper is quite thick. Um, technically, you probably could leave it on there if you wanted. I like to remove it. And I like to cut it to size. Oh, the pad that I have, by the way, is a large 9 by 12 pad. You can get smaller uh, pads or bricks of it as well. Um, but I like the 9 by 12 because I cut, I cut into uh, the, A2 si uh, yeah, the A2 size. I can get four of these on a nine by 12 sheet. Um, if you get, I wanna say it's like a five by seven and you're, you're just gonna have a lot more waste with that if you get the smaller pad, if you plan on doing a lot of watercoloring. Okay, so let's see. My husband's asking me, did I mention? Yeah, I'm gonna mention it again. The date for the watercolor class is June 6th. It's going to be at uh, uh, 4 p.m. That's Eastern Daylight Time, so EDT, because we're here in Michigan. Uh, we're doing it on a Saturday. It's not going to be in place of one of these, but it is going to be free. We're going to do it live on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. So this is where I've started already. I hope you like it. I thought it turned out all right. So I did this with only these four colors. This is how wonderful these markers are. These markers are so awesome. And I'm going to give you a little sales pitch here because there's actually watercolor in here, all right? So it's, it's a liquid watercolor. Um, you have a wonderful brush tip on this if you want to do calligraphy and things like that. It's an incredibly tense, intense, intense uh, color, an incredibly intense watercolor. And you're going to get the intensity of that color all the way through this entire marker. It, they, they really are fantastic. Um, Edna is saying, is there a specific stamp sheet that you're going to be working with for the class? A stamp sheet. The stamp oh, the stamp set? Yes, mm -hmm. the class that I'm going to do on June 6th is going to be this, is going to be this um, uh, cherry blossom stamp set. We're not going to make the exact same thing in the class, but I will walk you through. I'm going to give you a little taste right now of what we're going to do, I, and I, I'll walk you through everything from start to finish in the watercolor class. So here I've got my water. This is what I, I like these little tulip, tulip cups. And um, so I've got my water. Another, so you're gonna need, and you can use a paper cup. You can use whatever you want. I like these little tulip cups because, let me get an, I've got another one right here. I like the tulip cups because they, um, you can just close them. <laughs> they, they store easily and you can take that with you wherever you wanna go. So. And then you're also going to want to have uh, a watercolor brush, and I like to use a really, let me, let me do this on here so you can see it. I like to use a really, really small little paintbrush, okay? It has a beautiful little point to it. This one happens to be, does it say what number it is? This one doesn't tell me the number on it. It drives me nuts when they don't do that. But, you know, get a, get a, just get a, a, you know, medium grade. I wouldn't get the least expensive you can get because you don't want these, you know, the little hairs or bristles to be falling out of it as you go. I would say get a medium grade. You don't have to spend a ton of money on it. But 
we're gonna we'll, we'll be doing uh, two different techniques in the class we're going to be working um uh wet to wet as well as um uh wet to dry and that's just the application of the paint cindy is asking what is the difference between brush marker and copics well a copic is an alcohol marker it's not a watercolor it's it's an alcohol based marker um and these brush markers this this has got a watercolor paint in it that's what's in here it's it's watercolor and it's really intense so they're they're just very they're just they're just completely different tools okay so i've already started down here you can see in this area here i haven't finished so in this area i've already put this really this brighter pink i don't know how to say it cerise i think it is that little bit of pink and you can still see a lot of brown in here notice up in here you don't see that brown so much so i've started that because i didn't want to spend a tremendous amount of time on this coloring portion today but now i'm going to move i like to work with uh kind of complementary colors so i've got this beautiful purple and the pink and i'm going to combine these uh, to some degree on here i'm using the so this is i think it's cerise c-e-r-i-s-s-e -S -S -E, and then i have this it's called red lilac and I'm going to use the red lilac to bring out the intensity of the pink. And it's going to offer some shadow to some degree or some almost like a low light as well. And so right now I'm going to start and my paper is dry. So I'm going to start by literally you're going to wouldn't you see how much I have to put in here? You know what? Can I zoom this down? I probably can't. Can I? Yes. I'm going to touch this down because I am literally just dotting this in here because it's inc incredibly intense color Let me zoom. Hmm? You want me to zoom? yes I want you to zoom all right there we go I literally just put a couple of little dots in there I get a tiny little bit of my water let me bring this down here so you can see what I'm doing all right tiny little bit of my water and now I'm just going to move that color around and you're going to watch how that area gets a little more rich in color you see how intense that got all in yeah intense that got and I can just grab a little more water and blend that up a bit And I'm literally just going to put a few little dots along these brown lines here. And I'm barely touching down. Wherever I want to have it be really dark, a couple of little dots is all you need. I'm going to move, turn this around. Whenever I'm painting or coloring, I always move the image or the subject that I'm working with. Oh, geez. Sorry. Alan dropped something. So I want a little more intensity right up in here. Oops, I keep grabbing that upside down. And notice I'm not getting into the white area. I want to leave that little bit of white because that's where, you know, there's the petal is not going to be as dark. If you ever look at cherry blossoms, the petal's not going to be as dark on the tip. So I want to leave some of that color. And you can see how that just got a little more intense in color. And I'm going to come over here now to this little bud, and it's just that light pink. And I'm going to dot in. I have to be very, very careful with this lilac because it's incredibly dark, very intense. Little bit of water on my brush. And I'm just going to move that around. I prefer to work with a brush rather than a water pen because I think I get more control over the color and over the amount of water. I'm 
There we go. Those tiny little dabs make a huge difference. All right. I have one area here I just want to blend out a little bit more. Now notice I'm going back to an area that I had colored earlier. I still have a lot of that paint on the paper and I just want to blend it just a little bit better. There we go. Now I'm going to put a tiny little bit, actually I don't want the purple, I want a little bit of pink into the center here. Just dot that in a tiny little bit. I have a little bit of water. Now I always have something right next to me here to brush off on. Excess water, excess paint, whatever it is, if I'm changing colors. Okay? So that's just that little bit of pink. Now we're going to finish up those leaves. and the branches. Actually, now that I'm looking at this, I think there's an area here that's supposed to be pink. So I'm going to grab a little bit of water, and this is a different technique. This is where we start with the wet. That means that I wet the paper. Oops, not the purple, I want the pink. And I'm going to dot that in. Did you see that move across the area? If it were a larger area, you would, you would have seen it better. But when you apply the color to a wet area, it just kind of shoots across and it gives you a beautiful natural movement of color. And we will address that in the class as well. So this area here is wet. This area here is dry, so I'm going to start working in a dry area. If I were to start working in a wet area and I have a different color, I would end up with a bit of a mess because the colors would really, really combine. What color do I have here? All right, that's curry. I'm going to start with olive green. One of the things, I, I think my only negative about the markers is that it has the name on this little label on the cap. That's my only issue with them because over time if that wears off I'm not going to be happy. So I'm going to add a little bit of this olive into a couple of areas here. And I'm being very careful with it because I don't need a lot of it. Get some water on my brush, a little more color. And I'm just going to start moving this through a little bit. And here's the thing, if it goes out of the lines a little bit, I'm not going to worry about it. It's one of the benefits to using an ink pad, you know, I stamped it with a brown, right? So I'm using an ink pad that is in my the color family that I'm working with. Okay, so I move that around just a little bit. I'm going to let that dry. Make sure I got the right one. Now I'm going to add some in here. We've got some more leaves down in here, and I'm literally, these are so, such small little areas. I don't want a lot. Just dot that in a bit. So notice I'm dipping into I don't know if you can see it. I dip into my water and then I offload some of the water off of the brush because I don't want to flood it. If I flood it, I lose control of it. Okay, 
and I'm not covering the entire area with this green. Let me double check something. All right. So we should be good and dry over here already because I didn't add a tremendous amount of water. So now we've got to warm this up just a little bit and I'm going to come in. This color is called Curry. And I'm just going to dab some of this in as well and kind of warm that up a little bit. Just richen that up a little. And now I'm going to bring some of this. The curry is, um, it's got a little bit of a warmth, a little bit of a brown in it. Dot a little bit of that in. That is crazy about this area here. I think I have too much of the green. So Add a little bit of water over the top of the green. I'm going to pick some of it back up. A little bit of water. Dab it in and pick some of it up. See how it pulls the color back up? There we go. I'm going to let all that dry because I just added a lot of water in there. I'm going to move my water back up so I can move the image up and you can see a little bit better. So this is a little more brown. This one is called praline. Only putting a tiny bit of this in areas that I want to lessen that green and just really make it look like uh, I want the brown to start to show in. There you go. Pull that brown in alongside that green a bit. And it just looks so pretty. Okay, now one more thing that I do, I've grabbed the little acetate sheet from my stamp set. I want to pull a little tiny little bit of green. I don't want a lot. So this is another way you can pull your color. I have an extra little sheet here just to see where I am with my green. See that green? I'm going to lighten that up a bit and I'm going to just bring some of that right into my leaf. So that gives me a beautiful 
lighter, kind of transparent, if you will, or translucent green on that leaf. And that, I think, is it for painting this image. So that's just a little, just a little taste of what we'll be doing. Alan, can you take this water? Actually, I can leave it over here. Let's do that. Leave it over there. Okay, so that is a little taste of what we'll be doing. We will color or paint the entire image, and there's a lot of different, there's several different techniques that we'll be going through as, as we go through the image when we do the class. So Sue is saying, are the markers refillable? I do not believe they are. Bianca is asking, does this dry up fast or do you have to wait long? Oh no, it's dry. As I move along, as I move along from one place to the other, I, I will, I, like when I start in this area, I will do this leaf or leaf, this petal right here. And then I'll move to the petal over here because I don't want to get two wet areas together. And we'll talk about that in the class. But by the time I'm done with this area, this one's already dry. It doesn't take long, it's just water, it's just gonna evaporate. Beverly, um, how long did I work on this? I think I was maybe working for, I'd say maybe an hour, hour and a half to paint this image. And so we're gonna allow two hours just for the painting of it on, on uh, the 6th of June. And um, because I really wanna walk you through and talk to you about what we're doing and I want to allow questions and stuff as we go as well. So let me go ahead and get these out of the way. All this stuff here. And then we're going to make a really simple card with this. Oops. All right. So here is my card base. All right. So this is an A2. We need to zoom back out, I think, Alan. So this is my card base. This is A2. So I start with a half sheet of, um, of paper. So this is um, eight and a half by five and a half. So then when you fold it, you end up with four and a quarter by five and a half. That's better. Thank you. And then I have just an A2 sheet and a black cardstock. And then I have my image here. Actually, they, they may have gone out a little, a little too far, maybe. But um, okay, so but in order to layer this, we've got to, here's the look that I want. I want to have the black to kind of frame it. That's good. It's bouncing, but it's good. I want the black to kind of, it's good. Leave it. There you go. I want the black to frame it like this. All right. And I'm choosing black because, it, because I'm going to do, um, I like the strength of it, first of all. I love the contrast. And I'm going to stamp the word hugs on the front here. And we're going to, Cross our, cross our fingers <laughs> so that I don't mess it up. Um, so let me get my Misty back out. Get my sentiments stamped. Um, I'm going to stamp the word hugs. I'm actually, you know what, before I do, I've got to cut this down to size because if you notice how I was going to layer that up, let's do my, the cutting of the paper first. I got a little ahead of myself there. So because I want this to be a little bit smaller than A2, uh, we would normally start out at four and um, four and a quarter. I'm just going to trim, I'm going to trim just an eighth of an inch off of each side. I'm going to see if that's going to be enough. So trim an eighth of an inch off of each side. Let me see if I see enough of the white card base around it. And I do. I think that looks good. And then I can do the same thing here. I don't want a really large black around it. I just want that little bit to frame it. So I took an eighth of an inch off of the card stack that I was going to mat it with. And so that took it to four and an eighth. Now I'm going to take this one to four inches across. And I'm going to remove it from, you know what, I'm going to take an eighth of an inch off the top and then an eighth of an inch off the bottom. 
me see, where am I? Yep, make sure it's lined up right. Okay. So then this will layer up. So this is how we're going to layer. If I can make sure it's straight, which I don't seem to be able to do. <laughs> And then this will layer just like that. And I think that's going to be really pretty. So it's a really simple layout, but I think it's going to be very striking. So the next thing I'm going to do is stamp the word hugs. So from the stamp set, I'm going to grab this really big hugs right here. I love that. I think it's so cool. Oh, tell me I didn't get something on there. I did. And I'm going to fit this in right here. Tuck that little S in just like that. Now keep in mind this is bumpy paper because it's cold press. So let's close the door, pick that up. I'm going to stamp this in my Raven hybrid. So here's my Raven. And I'm probably going to have to stamp it a few times. I even have a marker standing by in case there's some areas where the little divots are in the paper if the ink doesn't go in there. And I'm going to, like I said, have to stamp this more than once. So just expect that. See all those little bumps? You can just see it all in there. I think this ink pad is, I think I've been using this one for a couple of years already. Should probably replace that. And speak, speaking of which, we have got re-inkers on the way. So we will be introducing re-inkers for all of our hybrid ink colors. Um, probably, I would say the end of summer is probably when they'll be coming out. See, I've got a little, little divots in here that... So if you have our ink pads already or if you're thinking of getting our ink pads know that you will be able to re-ink them now let me grab me the one over there that I use do I have it over there my ink pad isn't my black one over there my raven isn't it right there oh no it's underneath the it's right at Alan right see where the stamped image is right by the light all right that's gonna be easier if I get up <laughs> there it is <laughs> All right, sorry about that, everyone. It's hard when you're stamping these thicker images on the bumpier paper. Okay, so I don't think it's going to go in there. So this is what I have. So you can see the little bumps in the paper. So I'm literally, this is just, what is this? This is a Copic Multiliner. It's a really nice black. I'm just going to go over some of those areas. Just to darken it. In some of the areas where, um, you know what I probably should have done is stamped this on a smooth piece of paper and maybe used a, uh, a die to cut it out into like a nice label or something. That probably would have worked out better, but... You know, this is what happens when you're crafting. You try things out and see how they're working. And I don't think this paper is ideal for stamping your sentiments. Would have been better with a smooth paper. But this is going to work. And this is, you know, let's call this a, let's say I made this mistake on purpose and I'm showing you how to correct it. <laughs> I'm also praying that I don't mess this up because I spent all that time painting my image. There we go. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So let's get this wiped up. And put my stamp away.
there we go. So I think that looks really, really pretty on there. And then I do have one more thing that I want to do. I want to stamp, let me do it this way, another sentiment that I can kind of prop up a little bit. Let's see, what am I going to stamp? Dreaming of you, I think you're so special. I want it to come in like right here. So we have hugs. I'm going to go with hope you feel better soon. I think that's kind of appropriate with what all that's going on. And plus, I don't make sympathy cards or anything like that very often. So this will be nice to have one of these in my stash. Let's line that up. There we go. I have it in the right direction. There we go. That stamped perfectly. This is smooth. It's a smooth paper that I'm using this time. Um, let's go ahead and clean that. I have another um, Fabriano watercolor paper that is hot press, so it's smooth. And I grabbed that, I grabbed a little scrap piece of that because the colors match perfectly. So um, I just wanted to make sure it matched it. So let's see. Yeah, let me do me a favor. Something I forgot. Just behind you in that little bin, there's a little black piece of cardstock. Could you grab that for me? Yep. Thank you. Because I think I'm going to go ahead and trim this. How much space do I have on top? I want it to be kind of centered. So let's go ahead and get this trimmed. And I want to see where this is going to fit. See how I want to put it on there. So I'm going to go ahead. You know what? I'm not even, I was going to mount that on black and I don't think I'm going to. I'm not going to do that. I think that would be too much black now that I hold that up to it. So, um, I'm going to cut this end blunt. Do you think people want you to use this? Hmm? Why do people want me to use what? Do you have matches your card? <laughs> what are you saying? The towel matches the card. Oh, did somebody say the towel yeah. matches my card? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the, does it? Yeah, it does. I didn't even note Alan saying that, that you guys are noticing that the towel matches my card, and I didn't notice that, actually. Yeah, I like that. It. It's just, it's from Ikea, and I just think it was, thought it was pretty, so I grabbed it. Now I've got it all covered in paint and ink and all kinds of things. All right, let me get these little fuzzies off of here. I think I need a new blade. And then, um, so I cut that with a nice blunt edge on that side, but I think I'm going to give this side a little bit of a ribbon cut. I think that'll be pretty. And let's get my foam and my tape out and we'll put this beautiful yet simplistic card together. And then one right up the center has that. This is my Scotch tape glider. Make sure I have my card opening the right way. <laughs> Let me flip it over. You know, I always check this. If you, ever, if, you ever, if you ever wonder why I flip the cards around, whenever I fold it, I, I would say probably nine times out of ten, I don't get it perfectly at the edge. And so the side that has the overlay, the longer side, I like, to, I like to have facing up. So if somebody opens up the card, they see a nice, flat, solid edge there. Carol Lynn is asking, are the tips of the markers flimsy? Yes, they are. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say flimsy. It's a brush tip. And um, let me answer that question real quick. Let me show you. It's a brush tip. So it's going to bend like this. And it's beautiful if you want to do calligraphy or something. They're absolutely beautiful for writing. And then 
Let's see. So I've got my tape on here. I didn't allow much. You know what? I don't like my edge here. I think I need a new blade for my paper trimmer that didn't cut the edge very well. There we go. It still didn't. I don't know what's wrong with that. All right. Let's see if I can do this without my head in the way. I gotta move it down here because I can't see. You know, I always line things up right over the top. Like I'm, I'll literally stand up right over it to line something up. And I can't do that without putting my head in the camera right now. <laughs> I'm going to clean something off of here. I have a little bit of something on here. I'm going to check on the back side to make sure if I use this that I'm not going to ruin the paper or leave a mark, and I'm not. So I got a little bit of paint here. This is, uh, I've used this before. This is um, a mono sand eraser, um, and it's for, it's, I, I get the one that's for ink. And I'm just going to erase a little bit here. Always test it on the back and make sure you're not going to you know, leave any residue or mess something up on your paper. But there you go, that cleaned it right up. Much better. So for the next layer though, I'm going to use my trusty foam. <laughs> how, how much have I used this foam? Can you tell that the foam roll is getting smaller? <laughs> it's almost fitting the whole thing on the camera now. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and cut these so that I have um, this for all my for all sides. There we go. Ooh, almost cut myself. That would have stained the card. <laughs> I don't think people would somebody would I don't think anybody would want to get a get well with my DNA all over it. <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> See now here's the downside to doing live stuff is that you guys learn the ins and outs of my, let's call it quirky personality. <laughs> oh boy. Let's see. So once it's recorded, man, it is out there, right? All right. So here we go. I got that one layer of foam. I love my foam. I say this, I think, every single time because it's it's not really thick. It gives me control. And if you ask my husband, he will tell you day in and day out I have control issues. So <laughs> I like to have control over the thickness of my of of the dimension of the card. And um, so having a thin foam like this, you know, I can stack it up if I want. Or I can just go with a single layer. Let's see how this is going to fit. That's going to be so pretty. Where's the end of my tape? Here we go. And one more. That's going to be a little, does it fit or is it long? Let's see. It's a little bit long, so let's trim that. There we go. backing off of that and then let's put this hmm I'm gonna look on camera and see how that goes I think that's a I'm gonna put it right here so I'm gonna line it up with the edge of the watercolor paper hopefully it's straight let me look on camera here I think that's straight. If it's not, I'll straighten it afterwards. But I think that that is it. And I like it. I think it's so pretty. It's simple. It's elegant. It's handmade. So Anne is asking, can you use regular water paints or do we need the pens? You can, for the, for the class. No, you can use whatever you want. You can absolutely use whatever you want. Um, if you, and, and you don't even have to use the colors that I use, you know, if, if you want to use regular, I mean, they're all just watercolors, right? I really like these pens just because there's such an array of colors and different variations of color. Um, I don't have to, 
um, I don't have to mix my own colors, which I do when I use some of the other sets that I work with. Um, I just, and I love how they move on the paper, but if you have something that where you feel the same way about it already, you have your watercolors that you love, by all means, use whatever you want. You know, to be honest with you, if you don't even want to use watercolors, if you like Copics, but you just want to join, you know, any alcohol marker or pencils, you just want to join in and color, do that. It does. I mean, you, you can do whatever you want. If you just want to join, join us and just kind of have some fun. I mean, that's, you know, by all means, it's a free class. Um, let me change my camera here real quick. There we go. It's, it, it's a completely free class. So, you know, you can join in and watch, you can join in and, and color and paint or, you know, whatever it is you want to do. Um, and you can do your own crafting. If you want to create a scrapbook page, do whatever you want to do. Um, if you just want the company, we're going to be here. So, uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love watercoloring. It is my absolute favorite medium to work with. Um, and so I will teach you, it's going to be June 6th, um, 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And uh, plan on two hours. You know, if we finish a little bit early, then great. But plan on two hours. We're going to be painting, I'm going to be painting this image. Um, if you want this, then you can go ahead and order it, you know, at your favorite retailer. You can order it from our store. We do have the markers. There's a lot of retailers that are carrying it. So, you know, take a look around and see. Um, we're, we're, we're not going to be working, I don't, I, you know what, I'm going to take that back. I was going to say we're not going to be working with the die, but I don't know because I haven't planned that card. It's not going to be this exact same card. Oh, I'm being told we only have six more die sets. So for, for the cherry blossoms, we only have six more in stock and we're going to have to, we're going to have to reorder. So, <laughs> so if you did want the die. <laughs> But I, I know that other you know, retail stores carry it as well. So by all means, look to your favorite retailer and see if, if they have it there. Um, we do have the markers if you're interested in those. But um, you know, another thing too, if you wanted to work with another flower, you can do that too. You can work with whatever is in your stash and just apply the same technique and stuff that I'm going to be teaching um, on June 6th. So it's completely up to you. It's a totally free class just for my enjoyment and hopefully yours. So we've got to do a giveaway because we're running short on time. Oh, you know what I realized I did, Alan? <laughs> I'm such a goof. I'm such a goofball. <laughs> wow. So I had, remember early on when I showed you my stamp set that was already loved and it had the black because I, I was stamping with black and brown, whatever colors I used. When I did my stamping for you guys just a little bit ago, I used the one that we were going to give away. <laughs> so we're going to have to so get another is, one. All we can have is the die. We now have two samples. Oops. Oopsie. So you will get a new one. It won't be this one. Don't worry. Uh, the giveaway. Get your comments in there because we don't know that you're here unless you let us know you're here. But you're going to get the cherry, blo cherry blossom stamp and the die. We already have the die set here, so you're, you're going to get them both. So, drum roll. Sheila Fisher. Sheila Fisher. You are the winner. <laughs> Sheila, I need to have your shipping information. So send me a private message on Facebook. That's option one. Uh, I need your complete mailing address. Uh, Facebook message, messenger, you can send me it there. Or um, send me an email to customerservice at ldrscreative.com. You can send me that. And then um, that will be sent I'll get it. It'll be forwarded to me so we can get it all shipped out to you. And that will go out in, uh, well, the very next day. You know, if you send it to me tonight, we will get it out to you in the morning. So congratulations. I hope you're going to join on June, June, right? I keep wanting to say July, June 6th, right here. We're going to be streaming on both Facebook, uh, the Facebook group and YouTube, June 6th, 4 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time two hours plan on two hours and um that is it for tonight thank you guys so so much 
so much. I absolutely had a blast. I hope you enjoyed my card. I had fun making it. And I can't wait to show you guys all the details of how I painted the cherry blossoms. So thank you for joining me. So much fun. Have a great night. And I will see you in a couple of days. I don't know what I'm doing yet for Thursday, but um, I think it might. Tuesday. It's today Thursday? <laughs> all right. I don't... <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing next week, but somebody mentioned uh, embossing the last time we were together. So I think maybe I will do some embossing. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to emboss something on Tuesday. So bye. Have a great weekend and a great evening.